we have just seen another major sign of weakness on the Bitcoin chart. And I'm telling you, this truly is very bearish, okay? The targets that we have, and we've been talking about of $40,000, they are real. This is really a legit target that a lot of people were denying as impossible. Well, I think more and more people are starting to accept, well, this really can be happening. In this video, I will be preparing you once more for those lower price targets, how we can be looking to trade this price action, okay? And delivering this information as always in a professional, calm manner. I'm not here to incite FUD or any type of fear at all. I'm just coming in to give you a professional trading plan, okay? And trying to calm down some nerves that some of you may potentially have. I'll pick up from my last video that I made where we obviously were looking for a major crash on Bitcoin. I was telling you how $40,000 really is you know, is a real, very real target. And every day it's just becoming more and more and more likely, right? So uh, it all stems, of course, from the harmonic target. Who remembers back on this? Uh, this was way back in da -da 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 May, where we, of course, were looking at the time for this price to come up to around 71,400 monthly to complete our harmonic target. That harmonic target, of course, was hit, and that did give me that short trade entry. Okay, if you remember, I've been posting that over on YouTube, over on Twitter. That 71,000 monthly target hit, took the short trade, now remain patient for what's to come next. That was back in May. Here we are in July. That short trade's still open, and now we are trading back down at $54,000. But it just goes to show you the respect of the technical analysis is very nice indeed. And not only the respect of the TA from that harmonic, but the way that we have then been flipping every level of support to resistance. Of course, at the time, we had a simple mini range that actually ended in an SFP of the high. And then the range low, of course, simply lost back tested continuation to the downside. But what also were we losing here? If we just think about this calmly and collectively, these major sign of weakness that we have been seeing over the past month. Well, of course, losing this, first of all, this mini range low. Then we go on to lose the range point of control. Then we go on to lose the middle of our channel here. So our higher term time frame channel, we lose that. See, see here, flipping from support to resistance. At the same time, the range point of control flipping to support to resistance. Uh, simultaneously, of course, on this downtrend, we have had major higher term time frame levels that once again have flipped from support to resistance. And then we, of course, the last bullet, let's say, was flipping the value area low into resistance here. So each very important level that we've had, we've simply seen flip into resistance. From the absolute high, you had the last chance SFP for a few dollars. And then even on the back test of the value area low here, if we refresh our brains, the back test of the value area low here coming in at $63,000, that also ended in a few dollar SFP of the high too. So you had the lower term timeframes into higher term timeframe level setups. Uh, so there really is no excuse not to have at least some shorts in this market, whether it's from the overall high of the moves or whether you had to get in at lower, more aggressive levels, the opportunities and the signs of weakness truly have been here. Uh, but I'm not sure here to show, shove that in people's faces. I understand it's it's a lot easier said than done, especially when there's a lot of emotions flowing through the market. And I would always say this, uh, if you have taken a loss on this, try and view that as a lesson. Okay, so each loss that you take, please, the worst thing that you can do is just take a loss and move on straight away. Review, honestly review journal here. What went wrong? What did you, did you make an incorrect decision? What was the reasonings behind this? And what could have you done better? And even if you have won, okay, if you have got a winning trade here from a short, okay, journal once again, what went right? But again, what could have you done better? Because nobody's perfect, okay, we can all improve. And it's only through this continuous growth, continuous strive for improvement, Okay, reviewing what's going on, working out how we can improve to get better is, of course, how we do get better. Okay, and when no one's ever at the top, there's always room for improvement from myself to every single person watching this video. Uh, so, yeah, I can talk through what I can imagine uh, some of the most common um, fears are at the moment. Okay, and that will be people not in short trades. 
Okay, people that are all in heavily spot, uh, be that Bitcoin spot or be that altcoin spot. You know, these are the type of people right now that are going to be very fearful because now it's really come to reality. Wow, this can get a heavy drop to the downside. And what choice do you have at this point? If you are heavily in spot and you have no shorts, no hedges at all, well, you are going to be sweating because this, is go this could drop another 20% to the downside. What, what is your options here? Do you want to short at $54,000, $53,000? Well, my answer anyway, no financial advice, of course, but I would not be shorting here. Again, I make it very clear. I only look for longs on drops. That's the only option I would have as a trade, either long or no trade. I would never be looking for a short at $53,000, even though I'm very much aware we could absolutely uh, continue dropping to levels such as $40,000 or below. But that doesn't mean I'm going to take a FOMO short trade at the very low of a move. We've just sold 20% to the downside. So for me, I, I, I think of it I understand the emotions that people could be going through, but you really, truly have to remain calm and make a plan. You have to be doing that right now, because if you do not have a plan, you are going to just be entering these random trades through no patience, okay? And, you know, probably, let's be honest, end up blowing up your account or just taking massive losses through through trading out of fear or, or, or just that emotional drive. You, you've got to remain calm and collected. And that's my aim with the rest of this video, right? So now we have, again, what's again confirmed another, another major sign of weakness breaking through this range low. What options do we have from here? Well, on the lower term time frame, we are starting to form potentially, okay, this is what I call a potential mini range. Okay, we've just, of course, hit that daily naked point of control. Uh, and we have the psychological $53,000 then just below us. So we can start to envision a little bit of a mini range. Again, I just want to emphasize this is for scalp traders. Okay, this is like yeah, and I would be happy to take longs around here, but you have to have very good risk management. I myself have also been taking longs over the past few weeks, but I'm very good at getting in and getting out, okay, having very small, tight invalidations, okay, you have to understand the easier trade right now is short trades, but that's not to say there are no longs to be had at all, okay, you just have to be very careful, and if you are not a skilled trader, well, you should probably not be taking so many aggressive longs because I'll just be honest, it is requiring a high level of skill, okay, to, to be doing this. You're trading against the trend. So just to be aware of that. But if you are a skilled trader, then, hey, this is the type of trades that give the most, uh, you know, quick profits. So in terms of the next local scope trade long that I'd be looking at, really simply would actually be a move back down to the low of the wick that we saw put in. And I would love for this to happen around New York Open. That would be the icing on the cake. And again, I don't expect this to be some full-blown reversal that brings us up to new all-time highs. But if we can take a few hundred dollars, even a thousand dollars of profit off of it, like in terms of percentage move here on the right, you know, if we can go from 53 to 54, back up to the middle of the channel, that's a successful trade, okay? Lock and take profit one. Could it potentially turn into a swing trade? Well, it could. Not the most likely, but it could, right? And that's the type of trade that we're looking to get, or I'm looking to get into anyway. So the outlook of this would be obviously continuation to the downside here, taking out the range low. So this is what I call taking out mini range low, coming back into the range, and then simply trying to look to trade this range until it breaks. Okay, what I would be doing, of course, is pulling in a fixed range on this range, loading up my order flow software, and then taking a look on the more local perspective, okay, the reaction at range low. So that's kind of what the well, not necessarily recommendation, but what I would be looking at if, uh, you know, you two are a scope trader. That's the way that I would approach this chart, right? So you have your alert set down here at range low. It would be nice to be take out that big psychological number, of course, uh, and then simply look for the scope long at range low, bring it up to the middle of the channel, top of the channel. If we break up from the top of that channel, that scope trade then has the potential of a day trade. And if you start to reclaim levels such as 60K, well, that's where it turns more into a swing trade at that point, but that's a long way off. So what is the reverse scenario? If we, of course, um, either swing further pattern the high, again, trading this range, and we end up breaking down and losing this range low. So that is 
from the flip scenario, if we do not get a reaction here on the lower term time frame, well, then obviously there's no long to be had, period. And we simply look down towards our lower levels of support, which I hope you all know by now, the next one is sat at around $51,000, $52,000. Then, of course, we have that $49,000 at these series of lows, okay? So that those would be the next, for myself anyway, major levels of support. And again, <laughs> if anything to go by over the past month, these major levels of support are simply flipping to resistance and getting lost. And one thing that you will probably be wanting to know is what am I doing with altcoins right now? Uh, I've already told the champion members. And again, if you want these updates first, always will go to the champs. But uh, yeah, for me, a lot of altcoin alerts are, of course, going off right now. Uh, but I am going to be waiting for Bitcoin to be more stable or almost strong before I long alt. So I do not need to try and time the exact bottom of them, prefer to play it safe. As you all know, I've been running this conservative trading account and I have been very transparent and honest with this account. I am much preferring long trade setups, okay? You know, of the, all the trades I've taken, but pretty much they've all been long trades. And I've now gone now almost a few weeks with not taking a trade on this account. And this is because I'm waiting so patiently for Bitcoin to look at least strong or stable before I take another trade. Well, look at the chart. Is there anything here that's telling me Bitcoin's strong or stable, losing middle of the channel, losing range point of control, losing value area low? This for me was massive signs of weakness. So if I am trading this conservative account, I'm naturally... Um, uh, more interested in the long trades well, I'm not going to take a trade. Well, it's just sign of weakness across the board. And I know some people are going to be like, oh, this is, they're going to have something to say as everybody does. Fair enough. But I think it is much better to have this now flat line of not taking a trade, recognizing the weakness, than having a downtrend on the PL curve. Because I would imagine. Okay, the average trader over the past uh, two weeks would have had a massive dent in their PL. So myself, I prefer to have this PL sideways waiting for a new trade setup rather than taking poor trade setups in weakness and just losing money, period. You know, this, this is all sat in tether. I'm not taking any losses here. I'm just waiting patiently for a sign of strength on Bitcoin or lower. Okay, at this point, I would be waiting for lower. Uh, and again, if I take this long off of the local range low this would be an aggressive account i'm not going to take that on my conservative account you know this is a quick in and out on my aggressive account right so yeah in terms of altcoins in terms of being conservative and waiting for a good setup i will be waiting for one of two things next on bitcoin option number one really simply a move down to around forty nine thousand dollars and then yeah i would start to get a little bit more aggressive i do think this is a major uh, support level where we're clearly we've broken down but then we're starting to hit some big abc elliott wave targets okay so that would be my me next major sign of interest okay or alternatively of course a reclaim of our range low so if we start to reclaim the range low well that then would look to me as another failed auction remember the failed auction that we formed uh, back here, we formed this failed auction and then we got the reclaim where if we do something similar, but bringing it down to our overall range low. So we get in for the reclaim, we get some retests on a third touch setup. Well, then that to me would say, OK, at the moment, then I would be no longer concentrating on forty nine thousand dollars. But I could be looking for this to rally up to around sixty one thousand dollars, which is our next level above us. Right. So. I hope you can understand the way that I'm trading this, how it all come originally, this short trade, all come around from, you know, at the time being bullish, looking up towards $71,000, then the level gets hit, $71,000 target hit, taking the short trade, this was back in May, and here we are in July, sat in that short trade, am I ready for $40,000? You know it, I absolutely am. Um, but do I, am I saying we're going to $40,000? No, I am remaining very level-headed. I'm understanding where signs of weakness are. I understand where the next sign of strength would come. You know, I've told you once and I'll tell you again, I'm, I'm happy to see this go to $8,000. I'm happy to see it go to $80,000. Myself as a trader, I, sw I honestly couldn't care less where Bitcoin goes. I, I, don't, don't, I honestly don't care where Bitcoin goes. Okay, it can go $8,000, $80,000. All I need is volatility, okay? Be that to the upside or the downside. I can make profits in this market. Of course, I do find it easier uh, but in terms of the altcoins when the market's going up. This is just the way that I trade altcoins. I do find it easier to long them rather than short them. 
But with Bitcoin, yeah, of course, this is a, this is an asset that I always have and always will short. I find Bitcoin easier to short than I do long. So, you know, that's just the way that I view Bitcoin easier to short, altcoins easier to long. But nevertheless, at the end of the day, I know I can make profits with it going up and, and going down. So I just require high probabilities, good trading setups. I've talked you through the next local trade setup that we have based off of that lower range. Again, only for scalp traders, but nevertheless, lower range there at the low of $53,000. And if we lose that, where I would be looking down to next, we have two important levels uh, as shown on the chart and where we would see that sign of strength, looking for the reclaim, how we saw previously back at the start of May for that failed auction. So yeah, I, I honestly hope that I've been able to at least bring you some calmness, okay, remind you to not view it as major losses, but major lessons. We can always improve, we can always get better, okay? We're here to help bring people up even when, you know, themselves would like to bring them down. But I really want to try and bring you up, bring some positivity, uh, let you, you know, remind you everything at the end of the day is going to be okay. You can recover from this, you know, and if you've made profits, well, even better, the one thing you don't want to do is get overconfident because overconfidence then is going to lead to increased position sizes and at some point another loss. So just stick to your risk management, okay? Stick to the, the, the focus here, which is just taking trades, getting in, getting out for profits. Don't get greedy. Don't get fearful. Trade the charts and, you know, try and have some fun while doing it. If you want to do that, you know, I'm always here for you every day of the week, whether it's, uh, you know, weekend, weekday. I'm, I'm, I'm up the charts every single day. And of course, not only have we got the live trading streams, which you got another one going on, we got the live trading uh, we got the dedicated altcoin streams. We got the daily morning trading updates. So every day in the morning, you got a live stream. Uh, we got the live trading. And of course, the biggest thing, the educational library. Everything that you need is here for you at Chart Champions. Very proud of it. Very happy. And uh, yeah, let's see how Let Severin's doing with his live trading. Uh, it's going to be starting in about two hours. This was his live trading, sorry, that he done yesterday. So he was live trading a bunch of altcoins. So yeah, we even got the altcoin live trading going on. So anyway, I'm going to wrap it up there. I'm just going to say, if you've enjoyed, give a big thumbs up. If you want to see more from myself and the rest of the coaches, chartchampions.com. Uh, thank you ever so much. Hope you've enjoyed. And uh, yeah, that'll be me signing up. Cheers, everybody. Thank you, Anne. Goodbye.